Good afternoon. Good evening. Good morning, wherever you are. Hi, Sumit. Hey, Tala. How is everyone doing today? If you can hear me okay, see me all right, put into the chat. I'm doing very well. Thanks for asking. Hey, Anna. Hey, Christina. And Tukwasi. Hope you're all well. Thank you for attending the session. We'll give it a couple of minutes before we get started. If you have any questions, please feel free to let me know. I'm good. I'm good. Not a lot of trades today. Um, making up for what I did yesterday, but not a lot of trades today. Still good. Have you guys been trading well? Any trades? to share. Two more minutes and we shall get started. Just hang on there. Welcome. Thanks for joining. If you're new, thank you for joining. Sumit's a regular already. Good to see you, Sumit. Hey, if you're new and um, at any point in time, you have any questions, please feel free to ask away. I'll be happy to help. Let's see who else turns up. <coughs> All righty, let's get started. Okay, so welcome again. Thank you all for attending the session. Good to have you here. Um, again, if you are new to the session, good to have you joining us for the first time, and I hope you become a regular. And for the regulars out there, yeah, you know the drill. If you have any questions at any point in time, please feel free to put it into the chat. Let me know. I'll be happy to help you with your questions, answer your questions, guide you through your trading journey, hopefully making it more profitable for the longer term. All right? What I'd like to do as well during my webinar series or doing my webinars is, you know, put it into the chat. Let me know where are you joining me from? I love to find out just to see where is everyone at. Today, we are here with INFX on a webinar series. I will be doing some live uh, market analysis just to share with you my thoughts, ideas, views of where the market could be heading towards. And, um, you know, just so that we can possibly prepare you for some possible volatility, some possible movements, um, maybe tonight, maybe tomorrow. But also what I'll do is I'll be sharing with you some ideas um, to look out for, things to look out for into next week. All right. So as usual, a quick disclaimer before we move on. The information in this webinar should not be considered as investment advice or an investment recommendation, but instead as educational material only. The material is just the personal opinion of the author and the client's investment objectives and risk tolerance have not been considered. INFX is not responsible for any losses arising from any information contained herein. So what it means is that as I'll be sharing with you my thoughts, ideas, views of the markets, please, please, please do not just randomly um, jump into any trades of what, of what I've 
be sharing about. Um, well, I do tend to get through many different currency pairs and many different possible setups. If you do jump into, you know, if you end up jumping into all the trades, I can almost guarantee you that you'll be over trading, over leveraged. All right. So just be extra careful about that. What I'd like to always suggest is that when we talk about a pair or we look at a possible setup, mark it down, possibly mark it down onto your own charts or take a screenshot of what we've just been talking about. And then you can track that trade. You can learn from it, you know, see how it works. And, you know, eventually you'll be able to identify those trade setups for yourself as well. Okay. So let's get going. Again, a reminder, if you do have any questions, any um, currency pairs you want me to look at, put it into the chat, let me know. I'll be happy to go through that as well. So <coughs> what I tend to, uh, for those of you who are new to the session and you might not know how I uh, tend to look at the markets, for me, I do it a little bit differently or quite a bit differently from most other traders. I do look at the fundamentals a lot more. So I look at the news and where prices could be heading towards. Then I look into the charts to identify where whether it aligns with my expectations, right? So for example, if I think that the pound dollar should be going down, then I'll look based on the news. Then I'll look into um, the charts to identify whether the price is setting up to move down. If it's actually moving up, I'll wait. I'll wait for it to turn down or look like it's turning down before I start looking for possible sell entries. Okay, so that's what I tend to do or how I tend to set my trades up. Um, another thing is also that I'm more of a trend following trader or trend following method. Um, so what happens is that if I see something going against the trend, I would sit out, I'll wait for it to um, trade back with the trend before I jump into a trade. Unless, of course, you know, something happens in the news and it's anticipated that the trend should change. Okay. So you guys can see my screen all right. Okay, great. You can see my screen. Okay. Uh, I got request that from Sumit about gold and pound dollar. I will get through that. That's um, actually two of the pairs that I have been trading quite a bit on. So I will definitely look at that as well. Okay. So just to give you a quick recap of what has happened um, this week. Okay. Um, Monday, we start off Monday, not a lot of things happened. Bank holiday in the US, bank holiday in Canada, liquidity was low markets pretty much set right across, no big changes there. And then on to Tuesday, that's when prices started moving because we did have a whole bunch of manufacturing and services PMI data being released for the Eurozone, right? So you can see manufacturing and services PMI data being released for the Eurozone. And as a whole, the Eurozone manufacturing PMI went from a 48 Point eight expected to go up slightly to 49.4, but it actually dropped below expectation and below the previous at 48.5. So manufacturing PMI lower than expected, lower than previous, not great news, but that was offset by the services PMI, which was at 50.8, expected 51, got released at 53. So a big upside there on the services PMI for the Eurozone. Didn't see too much of a price reaction there, but what we actually did see a big movement was the pound, the UK manufacturing and services PMI data release. Manufacturing PMI for the UK went from 47, that's right over here, 47, expected 47.5, came out at 49.2. Big upside move. Flash services PMI went from 48.7 to a 53.3. So a big move to the upside there on the pound PMI numbers for manufacturing and services. 
And what you notice there with that is that when we look at the pound dollar, let me just bring that up. All right. Give me a moment. Where is my charts? Right, so when we look at the, where's my pound dollar? There we go, okay. Um, on the Tuesday at 5 p.m. when the news was released, price was sitting at that 1.20 level. Price was sitting at that 1.20 level. Um, again, just a quick recap, you saw that services and manufacturing PMI a lot better than expected and previous, which is why, oops, take that away, which is why we saw the pound dollar pretty much go from that 120 level, 1.20 level up towards that 1.2112 to a high for that period of 1.2140 or about 1.2150. Right, about a 150 pip move towards upside on the pound dollar just because of that stronger than expected PMI data being released. So we saw that big push towards the upside. Okay. Um, and then what else happened on that same day on Tuesday this week? We saw P CPI data, inflation data for the Canadians being released and trimmed CPI went from 5.3, expected 5.2, came out 5.1. Inflation or CPI, growth in, in Canada is slowing down, right? So it actually shows quite a good idea, quite a good um, view that inflation is slowing down, reducing the need for the Bank of Canada to increase rates further. So that actually saw, with that, we actually saw the Canadian dollar push up all right let's find you that tr um trade there on the wednesday that news release there right so we saw the price push strongly very strongly towards the upside because the need for the bank of canada to increase rates further has reduced so weaker cad we saw it would go from that 1.3450 up towards that 1.3528 all the way to um, today's 1.3567, okay? So that was what happened on Tuesday. Saw some other services and manufacturing PMI for the US. Again, stronger numbers than expected and previous, and that's why we saw that dollar strength come into play. <clears throat> yesterday, yesterday being Wednesday, we saw the Reserve Bank of New Zealand, RBNZ, increased interest rates from a 4.25 to a 4.75%. So a 50 basis point rate hike from the Reserve Bank of New Zealand, which saw a brief move to the upside there on the Kiwi dollar. Okay. Early, early this morning, we had the FOMC meeting minutes. We saw a brief drop right, right across the board on the other currencies because the dollar strengthened on the release of the meeting minutes. Why? It's because what was said here, you find it, um, was that most officials, most members of the FOMC backed a 25 basis point rate hike but there were actually a few officials who favored or could have backed 50 basis points. So quite a hawkish view um, indicating that maybe, you know, some members were looking at a bigger than expected rate hike. Hawkish view, stronger dollar, everything else fell. So that's what happened from last week or uh, from early this week through to now, right? Today, not a lot of big news happens. Just do that. Today, not a lot of other news all the way through to 9.30 tonight, GMT plus eight, where we have the US preliminary GDP, gross domestic product for the US. But 
I don't think this will, unless we get a big surprise in terms of data, I don't think this would be a huge price mover because it was 2.9%, expected 2.9%. If it does come out as expected, then we're not going to see too big a price change tonight. Okay. So a question there, a uh, question here in the chat is which time frame should we be looking at in charts? What I'll suggest is that if you are new, if you're new to trading, then possibly look towards staying on the H4 and H1 time frame, right? If you're new to trading, stay on the H4 or the H1. At the very lowest, you can could go to the M15. Um, I do, I have been coaching for coaching traders for a long time. I do know that a lot of traders do like to look into the smaller, smaller time frame, the M1, the one minute time frame, or the M5, the five minute time frame. What happens is that, you know, why they look towards that smaller time frame, thinking that you could see more um, price movements, it'd be more exciting, more trades to get into. What tends to happen is that it becomes very noisy, choppy price movements, and then you get caught in all kinds of different trouble trying to catch um, as the price fluctuates for the short term. So safer, easier way is to look at it in the H1 and H4 time frame. Um, for me, I do my H, I look at it on H4 first, draw my support resistance lines, then if there's a trade, fantastic. If it's a reaction at a level, fantastic. I'll get into that. If not, I'll look into the H1, right? I'll look into the H1. Um, and then following up from that, if nothing else, I'll look into the M15. If there's a news, I'll look into the M1 and M5. But that said, um, you know, also a quick reminder is that I have been trading for a long, long time now. You know, I always say I've been trading for 10 years been doing that for about 10 to 15 years now already, pretty much every day looking at the charts. So I always say, you know, if you're looking at a smaller time frame, just make sure you know, or oh, you are more experienced, you're not going to get too emotional with your trading, then you can look into the smaller time frames. Okay, so H4, H1, M15 at the very lowest uh, should be very good for most traders. So for today, we have the preliminary GDP number coming up for the US to be released, 2.9% expected. Don't expect a big change there. The big one will be tomorrow, right? Tomorrow, uh, two big news. One is the tentatively somewhere between um, 3 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. The Bank of Japan Governor Dagzinit Ueda is speaking. Right, a new Bank of Japan governor is, will be speaking, possibly going to make comments about his plans for the new or for the monetary policy in Japan. Right, if he comes out and says something like "we're going to work towards tightening," you know, no, no more easy monetary policy. We're going to look at towards tightening. Then we're most likely going to see the yen strengthen. If Governor Ueda or soon-to-be Governor Ueda comes out and says that he's going to keep with the current policies, he's not going to do any make any changes, possibly going to even add on to the easing policy, then we're going to see significant weakness in the yen. All right, so that's the big news for Friday. Into the evenings, tomorrow evening, Core PCE price index. Core PCE price index. I will show you here. It's the Federal Reserve's primary inflation measure, right? We all look at the CPI data, but the core PCE price index is the primary Federal Reserve's inflation measure. And that's why it was at three, 0.3%. It's expected to be 0 0.4. If it does come out at 0 0.4 or even higher, then that's going to spur the Federal Reserve, the US Fed Reserve, into further interest rate increases. Right? Further interest rate increases. 
if it comes out at 0.4 or higher. Why is that so? Is because if it comes out at 0.4 or higher, that's going to signal that there is, um, hang on a second, it's going to signal that inflation in the US is still growing, possibly growing faster than expected. So that's going to lead to the US FOMC having to increase rates further to try and slow down inflation growth. Okay, so those are the big news um, coming out for the next, well, tomorrow, tonight and tomorrow. I'll show you a bit of a re look forward into what could happen next week. So on Monday, we do have some retail, sale, well, retail sales data for New Zealand. We have the core durable goods and durable goods orders for the US. Again, I don't think it's going to move prices too much. The main thing you're going to look at for next week, GDP number for Canadians on Tuesday to be released. Um, consumer confidence in the US. And you can see here that consumer confidence, oops, where's my data? It's currently at 107. We could possibly see this um, climbing higher. Another big one will be the CPI data to come from Australia year on year was 8.4%. And you see that it's been climbing, right? 7.3 previously expected 7.6 came out in 8.4. So possibly we might see some surprise coming from um, the Australian side in terms of their CPI or their inflation data. It's at 8.4. Maybe it could even be higher, being released higher, which would spur the Australian uh, Reserve Bank or the Reserve Bank of Australia to increase rates further, okay, pushing the Aussie dollar higher again. With that, we have GDP numbers, we have the US ISM manufacturing data, PMI data to be released. Um, on to Thursday, we have CPI data for the U for the Eurozone, and then Friday services PMI data as well okay so you can see that there's not a lot not a big bunch of news to be released um, next week but there is a big um, a big one here Friday on Wednesday CPI data for Australia and GDP number the day before for Canadians uh, please when I watch should I make my entry on age one or age four okay good question there uh, thanks for that too Kwasi so what I would say is that if you are watching a trade, right? I'll show you an example here. Um, let's look at a pound dollar, okay? And I'll show you on the H4 time frame. So I'll zoom out a little bit. So what you'll see here is that if an example, if you are looking at this on the H4 time frame, and like I was saying, you know, you identify your key low levels. And then you'll be looking at your high levels. And then um, I'll just put in a couple of lines just to help the example. Okay. So we have the long, those lines there where we've seen price hit and turn down, hit and turn back up, consolidate around this level, break higher, turn back down again. This again, remember this is on H4 time frame. So if we do see this on H4, then what I'll be looking at on the H4 time frame is if price can break below that 1.20 level, I'll be looking for further downside. Okay. So what I'll be looking for is, where's my arrow? Okay. If price can break lower, I'll be looking for further downside towards that 1.1943 level. This would mean that if I'm looking at the H4, I would enter a trade based on the H4 time frame. Right? I'll enter a trade based on the H4 time frame. But remember, this candle started at 6 p.m. GMT plus 8. For this candle to close below, it would have to close at 10 because it's H4, so it's far away. So you have to close at 10 p.m. GMT plus 8 might be a long time to wait for that candle to close. You might not be able to sit there and watch the price move for that four hours, right? So I'll wait 
on the H4. If not, then I'll look at the H1. Zoom out a bit. Okay, and you can see the levels still apply. You could actually even refine it a little bit in this case towards this low point. This was Tuesday's low where it shot towards upside. So what I'll be looking for on the H1 time frame will be if price can go down by about 20, 30 pips towards the downside. If it can go down about 30 pips, then I'll be looking to sell down. Stop loss relatively tight, about 20-ish pips. Take profit about 50. In this case, your support level will be there. So I'd say about a 60 pip move. A one is to two, or most one is to three risk reward ratio towards a downside there for the pound dollar. Okay, so I always suggest if you are looking at it on the H1 time frame, enter a trade based on H1. If you're looking at it on H4 time frame, then enter a trade based on H4. Um, it wouldn't make sense to look at it on H4 and then after that, go down to the H1 and enter because it will show you a different, slightly different picture. Um, if it shows you the same picture, fantastic. That's where you get confluence. Uh, you can enter a trade with more confidence, but if not, then enter a trade based on which time frame you are doing the analysis on. All right, I hope I answered your question there, Tukwasi. Okay, so now, um, lost my train of thought. Okay, we've got that answered. We've done that. Fantastic. Okay, so now that we've looked at all the fundamentals, you know, it's relatively clear space into next week. Not a lot of big news apart from the Canadian data and also the Australian CPI data. What you want to look at now is the charts. So I'll show you here the dollar index Okay, has climbed up or has been climbing up and reached that 104.66 level. All right, hit that level. The last time it did that on the 17th of Feb last week, hit that level and went straight back down. Right now, climbing to that level again. Watching at this point, if it does break higher, we're going to see <clears throat> big upside move. If it rejects, then we're possibly going to see a big push back down. Key support level here at 103.76. If I did a Fibonacci towards the downside, what you notice is that it has, let me just clear a bit of this out. Um, take those away for now. Okay, I'll zoom in just to show you. Okay, you can see that we have that Fibonacci towards the downside and price actually bounced off that 61.8 to retest that high. Okay, so right now what I'm looking for is that if it does reject towards the downside, could it first come to, or most likely it'll come to that 104.30 or dot 30 level, right? Before possibly if it bouncing back up or if it breaks past that point, another short term level would be about the 104. Okay, a nice round number at 104. And then if it breaks past this point, we could see it come down towards a 103.77. Okay, so we're looking for if it does reject, first move towards the downside, second lower again, and then third if it breaks that point again. So a lot of um, levels to break before we're going to see a big downside move on the dollar index. Alternatively, if it breaks above that 104.66, looking at an H4 time frame, then you're going to see this move here. Oops. You're going to see this point here. Where's my line? Okay, you're going to see this point here. 
at 105.58, more accurately about 105.60 to test that level again, okay? So either break towards the downside, a few levels, a few short-term levels to pay attention to. If it does break higher, then we're going to see that 105.60. Why I haven't identified too many levels is because you can see that big move down. We're possibly going to see it recap back up if it breaks above this 104.66 level. Okay, so overall view, I'm looking at how the dollar has been moving, right? And you can see there. Um, let me just change this a little bit. <clears throat> Where's my lines? Um, hmm. Okay, you can see it has been on an upward trend. The dollar index has been on an upward trend. It's on H4 time frame since Feb tested and supported here again, and most recently quite close here. So I'm still looking for that upward move. Bias for the dollar is still towards the upside. What I'm looking for here is if it can break higher and climb towards 105.60. So how I would remind myself is that I'll look at this and say possible bullish DXY above resistance. Okay, so not straight away. I wouldn't say it's very bullish right now, but we're going to see more bullish move once it breaks above that resistance level. All good so far, makes sense on the dollar index. Put into the chat, let me know if it makes sense to you all. Okay, so if we see that the dollar index is likely, thank you for that, look at that heart. If we see the dollar index, or anticipate that the dollar index should push higher, what it means is that like Sumit was asking when we look at gold, all right, gold does have an inverse relationship with the dollar. Inverse relationship means that if the dollar pushes higher, then we're likely to see gold trade lower. Likely, not definitely. Okay, uh, you can see here that same as how the dollar was pushing higher in Feb, in Feb, gold actually traded strongly lower. All right, so gold actually traded strongly lower. Uh, most recently, it's found a support at about that 18, where is it, 18, um, 19 level or 18, 18.94, 18, 19 level. Okay, so I'm looking at that. All right, what you notice is that this looks like a, mirror image, a reverse Im image of the dollar index. Big push, found a support level. What we're looking for here is that if price can bounce around and then possibly break towards the downside. If it does break lower, and I'm actually looking for that, I'm looking um, to sell the dollar, to sell gold down. I'm still waiting for it to break that level. We do have another support here, right? So do that. You can see that at that 1783 level, 1783, very key support because we have seen it test here and also here, right? But I don't look at support as a one line level. I look at it as an area. So I would say that the whole area here between 1783 and 1774 is a good support area here. Okay, so that to me, that's a good support area. Um, a possible level of consideration will be about halfway through at about the 1800. 1800, very, uh, it's a nice round number. 
round number levels do have a kind of a um, effect on price where price would could hesitate um, at that level before trading down again. Okay, so I'll change that to the dotted. Okay, so what I'm looking at here on the gold, this is on H4 time frame, is possibly going to trade. And if it does break below 18.50, 18, 18 then we're going to see that move towards the downside, towards that 17.83 level or 17.80 level with a bit of a hesitation at 1800. Now, with that said, what do you all think? What do you think about gold? Do you think that's a valid view that it could go down lower? Um, you're looking for a breakout downward. I hope it's a downward breakout or do you mean an upward breakout? So are you looking for it to go down like we've just talked about or do you think that it's going to break towards upside? Okay, fantastic. We are aligned. We are aligned. So I am hoping for that. You know, what I would suggest, don't do anything now. Don't get rash. Don't rush into it. Wait for it. Let it break below 1818 before we see, we could see that move towards the downside. All right. Hope I answered your question there. Zoom in on gold and anyone else who had that question as well. Um. With that, we looked at pound as well. Sure thing. Um, we looked at pound and also anticipating that downward move, still waiting for that to play out with a support, key support level there at 1.20. So as we looked at gold, as we looked at pound, let's look at euro dollar like Anna is asking about. <clears throat> Why I like to look at the dollar and then after that, gold, they do, they do have that inverse relationship. And also what I found as a big driver of gold direction is euro. Right? Is a euro because what tends to happen when I look at it is when euro pushes lower, right? We see gold trade lower. But also because we see euro trade lower, um, the dollar index tends to push up and then that also leads to gold. So they do have a <clears throat> good relationship there. Look at the euro. This again is on the H4 time frame. I would just highlight this point here. So if you did just look at the tail, we have that downward push. If you even did the body, there's even a closer downward push. Okay. So near term trend line is to the downside. Let me see if a longer term one fits. We also have a longer term trend line towards the downside. Okay, so momentum is to the downside for the euro dollar. Big strong support here at that. Big strong support here at that 1.0505 or 1 1.0. I like round numbers, so let me just do that. Right, so it's still within that area 1.05 as a support level. So let me just see. You can see if I dragged it a bit, you can you notice that it has it's broken this, but previously in December, the euro dollar found this 1.0580 or 1.0, yeah, about 1.0580. Eight zero level as a strong support, right? A strong support here over this level. It's here. Okay, it did break, came back in, and then broke up again. But right now, the euro dollar is back towards that strong support. What you could be looking for again, if the dollar index does continue to strengthen, if the dollar index does continue to strengthen then we could see the euro trade lower, right? We're anticipating gold to go lower. We're looking at the euro going lower. If it does break below that 1.0580 level, it could be looking at a selling opportunity. In this case, not a big move, right? About a 60 pip move. 
stop loss can be relatively tight at about 30, a one is to two risk reward ratio towards the downside. Okay, why I have it not a big move here is because that 1.05 level is going to be a key support level. Key support level because if you did move miss this trade, this small, well, smaller trade, 64 pips towards the downside, then I would say look for it if price is going to break below 1.05. Because if price breaks below 1.05, I'll zoom out a bit. I know it's a bit harder to see here. Okay, you'll find next key level here at 1.045, right? So about a 50 pip move, but the big move down at 1.03, okay? So don't stress too much if you've missed out or if you would miss out on this first trade, what I would look at is also if it can break below 1.05, take profit, 150 pips, stop loss, about 30 pips. It's a good one is to five risk reward ratio towards the downside. Okay, so we have a small trade from breaking below this 1.0580 or 85 level down towards 1.05. Then the big move, if it continues towards the downside, towards the 1.03 level. Could it happen? Possibly. Is it high chance? We'll have to wait and see what the dollar index does. Um, but you do also want to remember that you have a bit of a hesitation level there at that one point, almost at 1.04 price level. Okay. Answers your question there, Anna, on the euro dollar? Fantastic. All right. So um, those were the big, you know, the major ones that we're looking at. <clears throat> I'll share with you one of the things that I was doing before. Let me just find myself, find my profile. There we go. <clears throat> um, so I was looking at that reversal on Kiwi. This was in the lead up to the news, but we haven't seen that happen yet. So we have a bullish, or I identified a bullish divergence there on the Kiwi dollar as it tested, as it found that 0.62 <clears throat> level as a support. Now we're still looking for it to push higher, right? That bullish divergence with price going lower by the MACD pushing up. So I'm looking, still looking for that push possibly towards that 0 0.64 level. Um, this is a big one here. Look at that. So I was looking at a pound yen all I, want, all I was looking for is for it to break above this 162 level to climb up towards 164. It came so close. 160, about 163.76, right? Just missed that 164 level, but that was a big breakout potential. This again was on the, um, what time frame was this? Um, can't see. On the H4 time frame, if I'm not wrong. Okay. So that was um, a very nice trade. I managed to jump on on the pound yen. Okay. Uh, what else was I looking at? It's US CPI pennant on the CAD Swiss franc. So these are all trade ideas that I was watching very closely. I'm looking at that pennant, it's still within that range. I'm unable to update that, but still within that range. Still looking for it to break below 0 0.6785, possibly going to get down towards 66 level. Okay, so I'll put this in there in the link for you guys. If you want, you can jump onto that, follow, and um, I do share quite a bit of an update in terms of trade ideas, potential trade ideas as well, and setups. With that, um, looking at the US yen, 
right? You notice here the US yen traded strongly because we do have, um, you see here again, tomorrow, right? This is going to be a big news event here, Bank of Japan governor speaking. So tomorrow we do have the US yen possibly coming into focus. And that's why it's actually been trading within that range, kept at that 135.23 level. And also a bit of a trend, a short term move towards upside. Okay. So, what I anticipate that if we do see further. Um, strength in the dollar, we could see the US yen trade higher to test that resistance level again. It is now trading at 134.89, could get to 135.20, possibly break out a little bit. But tomorrow, if the new governor does say something about cutting or tightening on the monetary policy, then I'm looking for a break to the downside. Right, a break to the downside. Big strong level here. And you can see at this point at 132.64. I don't think it'll go that significantly to 130. Would be great, especially if I'm on a trade um, selling it down, but I don't think so. But those were the few. Um, support levels that I would have identified if price does trade significantly lower or breaks that trend line, that short term trend line to trade down, right? If the bank of, if the governor from the Bank of Japan doesn't say or doesn't um, want to continue or indicates that he's not going to continue on with the current monetary policy. If he says nothing and we see strength on the dollar, we see the Bank of Japan governor not saying anything, we're likely to see a breakout, <laughs> right? A breakout towards upside on the dollar yen. How high could it go, right? We know that immediately we could see 137.25. And in the slightly higher is 138. So I'll be looking for that potential either to the upside, price breaks down to the first support, or breaking above the resistance, climbing strongly towards that 137 level. Trade setup wise, you could be looking at 135.50, take profit about 150 pips, stop loss tight. And maybe even 50 pips, one almost one to three risk reward ratio towards upside. Okay, so that's the um, possible upward move on the US yen. If it breaks the trend line to trade down, then short position would be below the trend line. Right, below the trend line. Stop loss about, uh, about 100 pips. I like to have it over the resistance. Take profit about 175, almost a one is to two risk reward ratio towards the downside there on the US yen. All right. So it all comes down to what's going to happen along this level, going to break above that resistance towards upside or break that short term trend line to trade lower. I'll ask you guys, what do you think? Is it going to break up? trade significantly higher or have a big retrace towards the downside. Um, no right or wrong answer. Don't worry, no right or wrong answer, but we'll see what happens. So it says looks like upside. Well, I would love to see that, um, especially because you all know I do like to follow the trend. So we have seen it pushing higher since Feb would continue to the upside would be a great trade up. Um, if it does reverse, I would be very cautious about trying to sell it down. What I would for myself look at is if it does come down, is it going to bounce back up? Then I'll be looking for that upward move um, to the upside. 
Uh, well, actually, you know, the market's always, not, not only now, but the market is always unpredictable, um, which makes it fun and interesting, especially with the news coming out. So I like, I'm very encouraged that you're all, you know, looking for trend following scenarios, but also understanding that, you know, there's a lot of unpredictability in the markets. So just remember, trade with extra caution, right? So I'm looking for that on the US yen. Pound dollar bouncing back up a little bit, not doing too much. Take that away. That one's... Okay, um, that's fine. We've gone through that. Nothing much on the Swiss franc, US CAD. So US CAD at this point here, very messy, very choppy. It's, I just found that 1.3550 resistance level Seems like it's failing to break higher. Looks like it's going to trade slightly lower. We do have a strong, well, not strong. We do have a range here. So it does need to break below 1.3515 to trade lower with the next support level here at 1.3450. Okay, if it does um, break higher, then the next key resistance would be those levels at 1.3616 and 1.3670. Thank you, thank you for that, Sumit, I appreciate that. All right, Aussie dollar, uh, remember Aussie dollar has that CPI data to be released. I'm encouraged to see that it is about at that 0 0.68 level, round number level again hoping that you'll find that support there to bounce higher, to trade higher. Immediate level will be a previous high, swing high at 0 0.6916. Okay. So that's the Aussie dollar. Doesn't have a great setup. I think a better setup will possibly come later into the week. Or later into ne or into next week, where price would have reacted, and we're going to see it when it comes closer towards the news release, and we could see a better price reaction, a possible better um, signal of where prices could get towards. Okay, so we've gone through quite a number of um, different pairs and ideas. Dollar index, looking at that possible push towards the upside. US yen breakout potential hopefully to the upside or quick retrace back down pound dollar still trading along that level i am looking for that downward move looks like it might bounce briefly before turning back down euro dollar also bouncing at that nice support level but you know think that if the dollar index continues trading higher then we could see that trade um, the pound and the euro dollar trade back down. US CAD, not too flash, not super excited about this. Um, the Aussie dollar have to wait for the rate or the CPI decision on next week. Again, remember the US dollar is trending strong, but we do have a big news tomorrow the core PCE price index. If it does come out at 0 0.4 or 0 0.5, we're going to see even more upside. We're most likely going to see even more upside on the dollar. All right. So with that said, do you have any further questions? Have you found any? I look forward to your feedback or your questions or comments. Have you found the session useful, interesting, and potentially helpful for your trades or your trade setups? You're most welcome, Sumit. You're most welcome. And thank you for being a um, loyal supporter and follower. I appreciate that. Where do we get the news from? Okay, you can get it here at Forex Factory. I'll put in a link for you guys. 
Thank you, Christina. The market is the expert. I, I just have spent a lot more time on it. Not an expert yet. The market is the expert. Okay, so you can get the news here on Forex Factory, absolutely free, nothing to pay for. You can register, join, but nothing to pay for. So it's great. It's a great resource. All right, so with that said, please remember, remember we do have some news coming out tomorrow, or tonight and tomorrow. Please trade well, trade safe, and I hope to see you again at the next session. Be a regular. Catch you again. Take care now. Bye-bye.